Yeah. So what I'm saying is, you, if you open up the Quran and you will see how the Quran resonates with you about the reality of who God is and who Jesus is, who Mary is, who Moses is, who Abraham is, because the Quran does two things to the Jews and the Christians. It affirms the truthfulness within your scripture and it falsifies the errors and the falsehood within the scripture. So you can take this as a quality control, as a guardian, as a muhayminan, as the Quran says, as a quality control of the scripture of what happened to it. Do you know how the scriptures in the past, they got tampered with? To give you an example, how many gospels do you know of that existed, uh, gospel of Jesus, how many? You've got four in the Bible, right? But were they the only four that was written? There are many others written. We know of 49 Gospels that were extant today. Gospel of St. Thomas, Gospel of Mary, Gospel of Infancy, Gospel of Ebionites, Gospel of Judas, many, many Gospels. I've just given you some examples, right? These were written by people which you would say as a Christian, these are forgeries in the name of God. Yet, they were written by Christians, but yet they are forgeries. So now, if they were true, they should be in the Bible. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, these Gospels are not in the Bible. If they were true, divinely inspired book, they should be in the Bible. Because they're not in the Bible, the church has told you through, your, through its teaching tradition, these are written by people and they're not canonical, they're not inspired by God. So they are indeed forgery in the name of God. So if the Christians within the first 400 years were able to lie about God and write Gospels, then it should become obvious to you that people can corrupt the Book of God. If you go to the British Library and you, and you see the Codex Sinaiticus, a very early manuscript, 4th century manuscript of the Bible, you will see the Bible that in the British Library has text which is not the same that you have in your text in King James. Because, because many people, yes, yes, many people corrupted the text of the Bible. Yeah, but you accept, at, at least accept people's hands corrupted the scripture of God. So the Quran alludes to this fact and says, this is what happened in history. So how can you even rely on a scripture which has been tampered with? Quran gives you the correct information what the scriptures contain. Sorry, I apologize, continue. It was a group of real Christians from Antioch mm. that they were um, writing the manuscript with the fear of God. They were writing a sad copies. And those Christians, they were separate from all the one from Alexandria, Asia, where they corrupted the Bible. They were willing to give their life to write the Bible in the sad copies. And then when the persecution came, the Catholic Inquisition came, mm. those, some of those people, they uh, hide hidden in the Alps and they keep writing a sad copies. So God preserved his way. God is powerful to preserve his way. way so which, which are the man scripts which are preserved? The, the text of Recepto, the one from Antioch. But the text of Receptus that you have is actually very, very late. The, 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 they were the, one who were, uh, the manuscripts that we have of the Texas Receptus is which one? The Leningrad Codex? The which Codex are we referring to? The persecution and the text of Recepto, the one which manuscript Antioch, is that? They were, they were the one that they, Aleppo they, Codex? They, they, the they, Leningrad they, Codex? They, the real Christians, the one who were persecuted no, and they didn't persecute anyone. I'm, they I'm taking, I am taking what you're saying. But which manuscript are you talking about? The Aleppo Codex? The Leningrad Codex? The, the one from Antioch. But these are very late. They're very, very late. We have earlier manuscripts, earlier manuscripts, like I've given an example of Codex Sinaiticus or Vaticanus. Those are corrupted by a man called Origen in Alexandria, Asia. That they corrupt the manuscripts. So those are bad manuscripts. The real good manuscripts, they came from Antioch. God preserved the word to those manuscripts. Yeah, so when you read the Bible, you have to have one. Yeah. That being translated with yeah. the manuscript from Antioch. Let, let's say this is the real version of it. But this is still how many? Hundreds of years after Christ. Thousands of years after Moses. 
do you have a mechanism to ensure that message is still the same from Moses, for example? But we know, people, as you said, from your own testimony, they got corrupted. There were versions that they were not corrupted, but, uh, and the New Testament, uh, they all been preserved by these people who were real Christian and were persecuted. They were not the ones who persecute anyone. And they were one who too high because during the Inquisition they persecute real Christians. Yeah, the, so. But do you know something? Scholarship or scholars, knowledgeable people, experts in the Bible, they would say we need a manuscript of the Bible which is very closer to the events. The earliest, the better. The quality of the manuscript becomes better if it's closer to the event. If I give you a manuscript written yesterday about the Bible, and if I give you a manuscript 1,000 years ago, the, you would say the manuscript which is 1,000 years ago is more worthy of the, the being... Pro, the problem is that everybody was reading them because the Word of God was very important. They were using them. So that's why... No, Bible was never in the hands of the people. The real, no, yes, it was in the beginning. And the, and, the, and the people, the real Christian, they had a real manuscript of the Bible and they hidden but, on the Alps. But and they um, kept doing a there's one thing, that's one thing missing the, in this the, equation, though. In the, in the historical reality, the Bible was never in the hands of that, common that, people. The, the manuscripts were only on those people who were able to afford writing and copying a manuscript. Only a few people had it. So that means the common people was in the, on, on the mercy of the clergy, of priests and so on, to tell them what what the Bible is. That's why there were two types of people. Bible was never... They were the priests that they were merchants, they were doing it for money, mm. and they were full Christian, and they persecute anybody who didn't agree yeah. to their money-making machine. Mm -hmm. And they were the real Christian that they didn't do the work for money, they were willing to die to translate the Bible and write the manuscript, and they were persecuted during the Inquisition. And those people have kept the work of God faithful. They made a sad copies because they had a fear of God. It why are the copies still different? If they if they tried they, all they their best, they are not different from the, 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 the they, are. they are. They are no, they are. If you compare, Antioch, you see, no, no. If you if you compare the the Alexandrian tradition the and Alexandria. the Byzantine tradition of the manuscripts, they're two main traditions. Because in in Alexandria, the Bible says that nothing good is come from Alexandria. The Bible yeah. mentions Alexandria but, as a place of sin. But what I'm saying is, the, when we, I, I I take what you're saying. But I'm saying, if you examine those manuscripts that come from Antioch. If you examine the manuscripts, how they are copied, they still contain so much differences between the manuscripts. That's the problem the scholars are having. That is why the scholarship is such that they're saying, because of all these differences, and they're very late manuscripts, we need to go back to the earlier manuscripts. The earlier, the better. The, 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 uh, William Tildale, he died. Yeah, he died in the state. He was burned with fire. Mm. Yeah, but that was much Bible. later. William uh, Tyndale is like... But, but it's very like in the, what, 17th uh, century or something? Yeah, I can't remember. Very late. He did it with the fear of God, yeah? He really loved God and he did it with the fear of God. He would have chosen the very best manuscript that he could find. So he did the best he could. That he and, could find. Yeah, uh, and I believe in the power of God to preserve the word. I believe yeah. that during the ages there were faithful Christians that preserved the word. That's fine to believe. Uh, uh, That's fine to uh, believe, uh, but the reality is different. The reality is... What, what do you think is the earliest manuscript of the, of the Gospels? Well, uh, when you, you have a Bible, you use it, it gets old. So you have to make a sad copy. No, no. Give me, give me an idea of what you know is the earliest manuscript I don't of know the Bible, the of the New Testament, for example. But, uh, the, I, I believe that God preserved the word to Baldessan and people who really had a fear of God and they were willing to die. So the first century, there is zero manuscripts. Zero. They did a sad copy done by the faithful Christians. No, no, I'm saying for the first century, there's zero manuscripts. So you can never go back to the first century to find the originals because they don't exist. So what you have to rely on is fragments from the second century, then third century have a bit more. And they say the majority of them are like after the eighth century. You know Dr. Bart Ehrman? He, 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 he's actually an expert on the New Testament the just, just one minute. Under heavy persecution, so they have to hide and keep writing the manuscript, but they did a good job. So, so Dr. Bart Ehrman, who, who is actually an expert of the New Testament manuscripts, he says that there are as many variants, as many differences 
in the different copies of the manuscripts, even the late ones, as there are a number of words in the New Testament. Now, even if you have, like say, 50,000 manuscripts, the problem is if you have so many differences in them that they contradict each other even, then how can we rely on them? The credibility of these manuscripts really that, suffers that badly. I mean, uh, you have to have faith that God is faithful and powerful to deserve his word, God is almighty God. He would have people who were faithful, who were who, who love God, and who did it just for the love of God to, to throw away sad copies, yeah? And, and he preserved them. How does that help with the fact that the manuscripts are not there? Well, I when you have faith, for example, you can have faith, and you can have faith in someone who told you something wrong. And you, all your life, you'll believe that is the truth. That's not really the way to actually, uh, you know, believe in something, especially, especially when, you're, when your eternity depends on it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, my, my experience, my constant testimony is that what I have is what God wants me to do. If I have an experience that Islam is true, yeah. does it make it true? Well, I, I just say, but I, I, it's a bit late and we need to go Yeah, forward. sure, sure, sure. It's a pleasure uh, speaking to you, but do think about and ponder on what I've said and read the Quran because the Quran speaks to you. No, no, no. It, the Quran doesn't like address. A free copy of the Quran? Yeah. No, we, Quran doesn't address the Muslims. The Quran addresses human beings. The Quran addresses Jews and Christians. So it does address you. So you, it's, it's, it's worth. It's, 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 it's worth finding out what the Quran says about you because it's directly addressing you. Yeah? So do read and perhaps next time when we uh, see you again we can talk about it and you can you can tell me about your experience. But think about it, if one quarter of the world's population believe in, in the book called the Quran, it is indeed important to know what this Quran is about. If one a quarter of the world's population believes in the Quran, it's not Harry Potter. We're talking about one quarter of the world population believe in this book. So we need to put some time aside to read about it. As I said, I've given you reasons why you should think about the Quran because the Quran corrects the misinformations and embellishments and corruption in the Bible and you will see the truth yourself when you read it. So <laughs> take some time out of it because in the day of judgment you don't want to be in a position in which when God asked you why did you not read the Quran in which I gave you the guidance and you said I didn't have time for it. Don't be in that position. Don't be in that position. All right. Okay, thanks. Take care. Take care. Okay. Safe journey home. Remember that the Bible says that you can only get saved through Christ. He's the door, he's the way, he's the only way, and there is no other name of heaven on earth. Also remember that Jesus only worshipped one one person, the Father only, only not the Trinity. The so follow Jesus Christ. He's the only way to heaven. Yeah. The and only way to God is is is, is through worshipping God, not worshipping Christ. Okay? Thank you. Take care.